Good morning, boys and girls. All right, we are continuing our journey on the one and only Bob. And so far, Bob's poor life. I'm not really sure about it. He's living without Ivan, without Ruby. He's digging kind of Julia, but man, Bob has had a rough life. So, um, and he's had some rough little friends around him too, huh? All right, here we go. I'm gonna get comfy so I can read out loud to you. All right marriage ivan and kiani are a lot like george and sarah as far as i can tell they grumble they cuddle they help each other and they tease each other sometimes it looks pretty nice still and all when i smell love i almost always smell worry seems like they're tangled together so tightly that they never will unravel there's a reason i avoid all that mushy stuff one big difference i've noticed between the two couples, Ivan and Kiani, enjoy eating bugs off each other. George and Sarah, not so much. Tiny but tough. Ivan always seems like nothing scares him, not even Kiani, who scares the heck out of me. On the outside, I suppose that's how I look too. Tiny but tough. But inside, well, sometimes, no matter how hard I try, I can't find that guy to save my life. It's like he's cowering in some other corner of my heart. I hate it when that happens. I hate that I am not the guy my friends think I am. The guy the world expects. I keep waiting for things to go bad on me, worrying about my nice, tidy little dog life will blow up in my face. I think George is a worrier too. He'll get up in the middle of the night and head to the kitchen sometimes in his old slippers, scuffing around on the wooden floor. I always hear him. I always join him. When he opens the fridge, the light spills out like maple syrup on a hot pancake. A wonderful scent drifts my way. Leftover meatloaf, stinky cheese, expired yogurt that somebody might as well eat, and it seems like the dog is the safest bet. The smell, the smell. The smells rain around me, and yeah, my tongue starts to hang out, and I nudge George's PJ's leg, and I said, he can't sleep either, huh? And he'll say, or maybe. Uh, I can't tell if you have insomnia or just a very acute sense of smell. Both, actually. I wait. I he usually makes himself a peanut butter and jelly with bananas, which is good for me, because the crusts are where you really get the good fun chewing factor going on now and then after we eat we sit back on the porch and george scratches my ears especially my right ear it's my favorite i understand his worry i think george works so hard his wife was really sick for a long time and he loves his daughter so so much sometimes when julia climbs on the school bus i'll watch george watching her all that caring and concern is painful to smell especially the burning scent of the stray tear he'll flick aside with the back of his hand like a sea spray. More than once, George and I have dozed off together. That's the best kind of snooze, if you ask me. Good, warm, safe in someone's arms, asleep, not talking. Often when I'm with Ivan, we don't even bother talking. We just look out his domain at the green grass and the crazy babies that swaggering juveniles and the hard-working females and we think of nothing and everything when you've been through the worst with someone you appreciate the best and that's why sometimes when he says hey bob it's enough for me to say hey ivan and then we just listen to the palm trees rustle and watch the saw grass sway brave once when we were still in the mall i told ivan how brave i thought he was the way he put up with everything that happened to him and never stopped being a good guy. Ivan just looked at me, cocked his big old head of his, and nodded a bit. That's not brave, Bob, he finally said. That's just knowing that I can't change. Call it brave, I said. I call it crazy brave. Ivan held a browning banana up to the light, like it was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen in his long gorilla life. I wonder whether he was going to eat it or draw with it. You never know with Ivan. Seems to me there are a lot of ways to be brave, Bob, he said. A tiny mouse, name of Eek, skittered across his cage floor. 
Hey, eat, said Ivan. Just checking for the crumbs, she said nervously, because she always sounded nervous. Dibs on all leftovers, I reminded her. She looked a little terrified that I relented. Over there, behind the tire tree, old carrot top. Respect, Bob, she said, scampering off. Take a small creature like Eek, said Ivan. He scratched his chin with the end of his banana. He did that when he was in the in the mood. Maybe brave for a mouse is different than brave for me or brave for you. He looked at me fondly. You're the bravest dog I know, pal. I ain't brave, I chewed on my tail, avoid, avoiding his gaze. You are Bob, untamed and undaunted, said Ivan, and he chopped off a ch hunk of banana. He offered the rest to me, but I shook my head. I wasn't feeling hungry. Also, it was mostly just the peel. This just, that's just my shtick, my routine, I hesitated. I mean, sure, I'm tough compared to, let's say, eek, but that's setting the bar pretty low. You are too hard on yourself sometimes, Bob. I met his eyes. He has these dark brown, deep set eyes, really kind ones, eyes that make you want to admit things, confess your failures. Once when I was little, just a pup, I did something. Ivan waited patiently. Ivan is the king of patience. I felt myself dashing into the dead end tunnel and I couldn't escape. I didn't want to go there, not even with Ivan. Never mind, I yawned. I do that when I'm anxious and rambling. Bob, Ivan said, you okay? You know me, Ivan. I'm always okay, always. I slipped away before he could ask me anything more. Ruby, Uncle Bob! Ruby races over, galop, galop across the broad field that's part of her elephant domain. She's so cute <coughs> when she runs like she's determined not to trip over her trunk. Ruby adores me. I make her laugh. I read the room and I lighten the mood. I got to admit, I am kind of adorable. When I'm with Ivan, I think, pal, we've been through a lot, you and me. We're survivors. When I'm with little Ruby, I think, girl, look at you. Hard luck passed and here you are so much happier. So love. Ruby, like Ivan, was plucked from Africa as a baby. She ended up in a circus that went bankrupt and then got shipped off to Max Mall. Ruby was taken in by my old dear Stella, and when Stella passed away, Ivan stepped in to play. Well, elephant dad, I guess. I did my part too, not because I felt like I had to. It just made life easier. Elephant toddlers are a handful. You think humans are bad? Try putting 200-pound baby elephant in a timeout. Ruby's family. Little Ruby seems much more content at the park, surrounded by her new herd. Old and young and in between, they spoil that adorable like you would never believe. She deserves every minute of it. Kid has had a rough start. Seems elephants hang out in packs of females. And now she's at the park. Ruby has adopted sisters and aunts and grandmothers galore. In the wild, the elephant guys head off once they're old enough and do their own thing. Sometimes I lo lose track of who's who among the elephants because they're always taking mud baths, scrambling their smells. By the way, what kind of animal actually likes baths? Mud. Sure. Ivan's art. How's it going, girl? I call to Ruby as she stops near the moat edging the wall. I had cantaloupe for breakfast, Uncle Bob and it was so yummy. And then I took a mud bath. She pauses to take a deep breath. Do you wanna hear about the new dog riddle, Uncle Bob? Of course I do, I say. I catch Ivan's amused glance. What kind of dog is always on time? Says Ruby. Hmm, you got me, Ruby. I'm totally baffled, bewildered. What kind of dog? A watchdog, Ruby exclaims. Watchdog, get it, Uncle Bob. Not bad, Ruby. Not bad at all, I say. Ivan says it's 
going to rain buckets, says Ruby. She dips her trunk in the moat and blows bubbles. I think Ivan is onto something there. Did he show you his new picture, Ruby asks. She grabs a tuft of grass and tosses it into the air. I wish I could see it, but I just can't see it because of this silly wall. But he told me all about it. My pal Ivan is quite the artist, just like Julia. Ivan sits up and nods toward a spot on the wall. Another mud mural, I ask? As any dog knows, dirt plus water equals mud. And mud means mess. And mess means let's roll in this stuff and maybe dig a hole or two. But for Ivan, mud plus flat surface equals a waiting canvas. A crane in my neck, edging a bit further down to the top of the wall. I don't want to draw any attention to myself. Hey, nice, I say. I mean, I'm not an, an art guy. To me, art is a glop of spray cheese on a cheese dog with extra grated cheese on top. Still, I've always admitted I admired Ivan's work. It's, Ivan begins, no, I say, don't tell me, let me guess. You always guess wrong. Ivan says. Not always. You thought my palm tree was a dandelion. Art is in the eye of the beholder, I say. You thought my blackberries were giant ants. Kiana ambles to join the conversation. And need I remind you that you thought this portrait of me was a chimpanzee with gas. The resemblance was striking, I say. Kiana glares at me. She glares at me a lot. On the subject of chimps, probably I shouldn't have mentioned the chimp angle. Gorillas aren't open-minded as dogs. A lot of them have a thing about chimps. They think they're clowns. But when I look at apes or gorillas, it seems to me they have a lot more in common than they like to admit. Ooh, there we go, like to admit. Dogs ain't perfect, but I'll tell you one thing, we're where we rule tolerance for us a dog is a dog i see a great dane and i say howdy and i run into a puggle it's glad to meet you how's it going smelled any good pee lately go to a dog park and you'll see well equal opportunity playful you sniff my rear i sniff yours you don't see that with humans obviously constantly seeing differences where none exist all of those things like skin color. Dogs could care less. You think I won't hang with a Dalmatian because he's spotted? Or a Sharpie because she's wrinkled? I'm not saying I love every dog I meet. Snickers comes to mind. But I'll always give the dog a benefit of the doubt. Life is short. Play it good. And there are plenty of tennis balls to go around. Okay, stop right now. I think I'm going to help you. Stop right now and write in a sentence about what you think mrs blair has been reading about what have i been reading about um take a minute write that down on the slide and also you can pause the video at any time you know a very handsome dog hi aunt kiani ruby calls once again ruby says to kiani i am not your aunt i am a primate and you my dear are not more's the pity but if Ivan is my uncle, then you've got to be my aunt, Ruby declares. Uh-huh, says Ivan, pointing to the wall. My painting, Bob. I consider it looks like a dog. Ruby flaps her ears. I can tell she's trying really hard to stay quiet. Um, a very handsome dog, I add. Is it? Oh, it is, Ruby exclaims. It's you, Uncle Bob? Uncle Ivan told me. But who's that, I ask, pointing to the other set of mud strokes. I thought you needed a companion, says Ivan. I know you must get lonely at home all day by yourself. It is true, but I've never mentioned that to Ivan. The guy's like a mind reader. I thought Snickers and Bob would make a cute couple, says Ruby. I blink in disbelief. Bite your trunk. Ruby stares to reply, but her voice is drowned out by the sharp clap of thunder. Storm's getting close, says Kiani. Ivan, dear, come on. You know how I hate the damp. It's true. He carries around an old 
burlap bag so he won't have to sit on the wet grass. Ivan looks at me sheepishly. She knows me so well. Kuzo, one of the baby gorillas, bounds over and leaps onto Ivan's back. Ivan loves all the youngsters, but Kuzo is his favorite. I think she reminds him a little of his twin sister, Tag, who died when she was still a baby. And you can see that a lot when you go to Disney, little babies climbing on the back. Ivan looks happy, doesn't he? Ride! Kuzo commands. Julia appears and her backpack is ready. Bob, she calls, we gotta get going. Right now, Kuzo repeats, yanking on one of Ivan's ears. Look, it's time to go, says Ivan. Good to see you, buddy. Stay dry, okay? Will do, big guy. I turn to Tiani. Enchanted as always, my dear. A trumpety noise cuts through the air. Uh-oh, says Ruby. That's Aunt Ikelo. Ikelo is the oldest elephant ant. Lumbers over. Come on, Ruby. Weather's getting bad. Just one more minute, Ruby pleads. Now. But I need to tell Uncle Bob one more riddle. Now, Ikelo repeats. Nobody ever listens to the little elephants, Ruby complains. You can tell me the riddle next time, kiddo, I say. Winking at Ikelo. Ruby brightens. Okay, I gotta go. I'll be in big trouble. Love you, Uncle Bob. See you later, Uncle Ivan. And Aunt Keani. I am not your... Keani begins, but Ruby is already galloping back to her herd. In the beginning... In the distance, the thunder growls long and low and not giving up. It reminds me of my stomach pre-breakfast. I test the air. Weird. Something isn't right. Julia, it's George rushing over. Hurry. You need to get inside. George, ha George has an odd scent, like he's on guard. I've only smelled it a few times on him. I look up, and the cloud have turned strange shades of green and yellow and gray clustered together like rows of fat marshmallows. It's so ugly, it's beautiful. I can't stop looking. The air goes still, like a cat before it leaps onto prey. Kiani and Ivan and Kuzo are racing toward the gorilla villa. A fat raindrop hits my nose. It tastes wrong. How can rain taste dangerous? People are yelling and running, opening umbrellas, covering their heads with maps of the park more drops. A far end of the field, I can make out Ikilo herding Ruby along. Another drop. A dry one, like a puddle. Hail, George says. Julia, now! He grabs her hand, rumbling. The sky boils and swirls. Bob! Julia calls. Come on! I move to leap off my perch and I run to Julia. I've done it a thousand times, but this time I lose my, feeding, my footing. I never slip. I am nimble. I am nimble as a nuit, nutwit. But the rain, the hail. I let out a yelp, and I land on Ivan's side of the wall, splat in the mud. Bob! Julia screams. He'll be okay, George says. I can smell Julia's fear and George's doubt as he drags her away. Torn apart. Now you guys know that um, Bob is not with Julia. And Julia and George are running into cover because lots of hail's coming down. Hail's like balls of ice that come down, right? Torn apart. Noise. It's all noise. Noise that hurts. Noise like a massive truck bearing down on us. The power of the engine, the inescapable wheels of a relentless roar. Nothing to see, nothing to smell. Just the terrible sound of the world disingrating. No way. I am flying. Airborne. Not far. Just into the nearby giraffe domain. Not high, but just enough to get to buzz the top of the trees. Not long. Just long enough to stop breathing. But I fly. I'm not alone. Half of the world seems, seems airborne. Trees, boards, bicycles, chunks of roof, umbrellas, chairs, bits and pieces of life. It's all levitating past like some horrible magic trick. Something hits my head. A toy truck maybe? And I yelp in pain. 
I am terrified, so scared I pee myself. And I have to, I'll be the first to admit, you try to see how dry your underwear stays, but still, I fly. Not like in a box, the box with my brothers and sisters, not like with the owl. This one is different. This is me, Bob the dog, spending a moment as Bob the bird. Okay, what do we know about hurricanes and t tornadoes? Landing. It's over. I land with the thump hard on my rear and slide to a stop directly underneath Stretch, the oldest giraffe in the, pa in the place. The roar, and by now I've realized we're talking a real live tornado, vanishes as quickly as it came, leaving a vacuum. The silence that hurts even more than noise. Bad dog. And this is why I am a bad dog. Not bad dog like I chewed your favorite slippers. Bad dog like I'm not a very good representative of my species, of any species. I don't think Ivan, Ruby, Julia, are they all right? I've got to find them. That's what a hero dog would do. One of those guys on the man's best friend show. Heroes, dogs, dash into the flames and dig out rubble. Hero dogs are fearless. Nope, not my style. What do I do? Bob, untamed, undaunting. I howl like a newborn puppy. I am not hurt, but I am bangled up for sure. But nothing major. I, and I don't howl for long, but it's what I do. Like I said, I ain't a saint, but at least I'm honest about my failings. Stretch. Slowly, with some difficulty, Stretch peers down between my two front legs. His body particularly shelters me from the rain. A piece of canvas has draped itself around my neck like an ugly scarf. I swallow my howls. We look at each other, too stunned to form actual words. Finally, Stretch clears his throat. Hello, he says in a strange, calmly voice. What kind of animal might you be, if you don't mind me asking? I'm a dog. Didn't think you guys flew. We don't, as a rule. I pick myself up and move under Stretch and take in my surroundings. The pelting rain has slowed some and the wind has dulled. What was that? Stretch asks trying not trying and failing to yank the canvas off his impressive neck a tornado i think i've seen tornadoes on the weather channel and they look like water swirling down the drain if water were black and full of trees and trucks they looked like death i gaze at him i have a crane i have to crane my neck you okay yep says stretch but from what I can see, a lot of other folks are not. All right, stop. Add another detail to the slide. Pause the video and stop and add your second detail. I'm only going to read a couple more um, chapters. Aardvark. Across the way, I hear something, a small squeak. Who lives over there? I ask Screech. The aardvark family, he replies, lovely neighbors. Carefully, I venture across Stretch's domain, and the sky is dark as dusk. Vocabulary word. I hear a flutter of wings overhead. It's Mitch, the mockingbird. He's missing some feathers. Bob, he calls, sitting on the fence post. Was that you I saw up there? Yep. How are things going? Not good. Lot of damage. We'll take care of yourself, I say. Likewise, he pauses and straightens a wayward feather. Like, little hint, by the way. Next time you fly, try trapping, flapping your paws. I make my way over to the broken wooden barrier, tiptoe over some scattered glass and s twisted metal, cross the paved path, and arrive at the aardvark. More sounds, and they're coming from what it looks like a demolished keeper's shed. I hesitate, not sure what to do. It's a big mess and I'm a small guy. Also, my head hurts. I feel dazed, fuzzy, and my ears are ringing. I yank off some small stray boards with my mouth. For the record, my small stray boards have small stray nails in them. 
Underneath the boards are three shivering aardvarks, two babies and a mom. They're strange looking, I gotta say, with their long piggy snouts and bunny ears. You good? I ask. What was that? The mother manages to say. Some seriously bad weather. It's over. Is it over? I consult the wind. I doubt it. You think everybody's okay, she asks. I don't know. I sure hope so. And then it hits me. Ivan, Ruby, Julia, George. Look, I gotta go, I say in a strangled voice. Any part of your indoor den survive? She nods. I think so. Go there and lie low. Where's Pedro? The little aardvark asks. I feel my head with my front paw. A nice bump is forming. Uh, who's Pedro? Our keeper. He'll come, I promise. Are you sure, the baby asks? I'm sure, I say, but of course, I'm lying. Sounds. The eerie quiet doesn't last. Before long, the squeals and shrieks and brays and squawks of the animal kingdom crowd the air. Terror, confusion confession pain far from comes the wailing of the sirens cars alarms blare from the parking lot and now and then people shout cries for help translate into any language human or animal fish or fowl i never want to hear those again never ever ever smells and the smells like i said feeling i have a scent i figured I'd smell pretty much everything there was to inhale in this big old world, but the smells of sheer terror, of helplessness, of blood, of broken bones, of torn wings, well, turns out there's a whole lot of smells I've never encountered. I didn't know how lucky I actually have been. Okay, we're going to stop right there. I stopped on page 154. We are halfway a little bit halfway done with the book. There are 340 pages um, in this book. Okay, so stop, put your slides, complete sentences, stretch those sentences, make them long, don't give me simple sentences. And I just read the book, so I know exactly what happens in these chapters I read, all right? Make it a good one. It's almost your only work today, all right?